Hey everybody, welcome to Trading Capital's daily analysis video. I'm your head market analyst here, Curtis Skelton, jumping into the charts on this September 26. Yet again, what is the common theme? Another down day on Wall Street. And this down day is coming on the back of the US dollar, once again, surging to new all time highs pushing the pound to levels that we have not seen in over 40 years. So it's truly, truly incredible the power of the currency markets and how that is dictating which directions the market is going to go. So if we look at the S&P 500 here, um, clearly see that we did not take out the low from Friday. So that short term is a positive sign. Now you do have this double bottom zone, which we are kind of lingering above. So naturally you would expect especially since we are in an oversold condition with with no bounces yet in the spiders and being the fact that the us dollar is extremely extended you would favor the markets to have somewhat of a potential bounce even if we get the slightest of pullbacks in yields or the us dollars and that's certainly how we're positioned i certainly think that these markets have to see some sort of a technical bounce just due to the factor that the signals that I'm getting, the extension moves in the US dollar, like look at this powerful move in the US dollar. And if we flip to the monthly chart on the US dollar, one of the reasons why I think we're gonna get that pullback is you've now fulfilled the short term upside move. So you have this clear parallel channel dating back all the way to 2014, where you have a high pivot, resistance tagged, another high pivot, resistance tagged, and then you have a low pivot over here, support was tagged, and now you've tagged that same resistance line. Now it's not saying that the US dollar can't go higher and maybe test this 120, which was your 2000, 2001 highs, but the US dollar has had a phenomenal move. It's gone completely parabolic. If you simply look at how far away from the, the 25 month moving average it is, it certainly shows you that the extended nature does favor somewhat of a pullback in the short term. Now, I don't think the bull, the, the bull market in the dollar is going to be over anytime soon, but simply just a, a even a one to two week pullback will certainly allow these markets to have a little bit of reprieve and get that technical bounce that I think we're, we're certainly due for. So if you analyze the price action, what transpired here, basically there's a critical range in the US dollar that signifies tightening against the rest of the world. So we've hit that range to a T, but basically the range is around that 104 and above. So if I drew in this, this, this box over here, basically the low end of 104 here is where the tightening range starts to begin. Anything above that just creates extreme tightening for emerging markets and the overall global economy. So anything inside this range is going to be very similar to the 2000.com bust. Basically, you had 925 days where you're inside of this critical tightening range. That is a long time for the dollar to be extended in a period where it put a tremendous amount of strain. And we all know what happened um, to the markets when the dollar stayed in this critical range for basically 925 days, the markets imploded. Now we could see something similar to that, but it doesn't mean we're not gonna get tradable bounces. Um, since we are swing and day traders, we are more nimble than the average investor. So we can generally be in and out of the markets before that big crash comes. But I don't think the crash is going to happen yet. I certainly haven't seen any signals from the credit and bond markets, despite yields are going parabolic. But simply speaking, I do think we've hit somewhat of a potential short-term high. I'm going, I'm expecting that the US dollar should consolidate now for the next one to two weeks bef at the very minimum before we see a potential move in either direction. So I think the consolidation will take us back down to basically this 110 area, 11050, and then we'll have to reassess as to how uh, the dollar performs. If we look at the US two year yield, I think that is extremely important to analyze as well. Um, keeping an eye on the U.S. two-year yield gives us a clear indication as to where the federal fund rate should and has to be. But if you look at this U.S. two-year yield, it's actually breaking outside of this resistance parallel channel. Now, tomorrow could be another technical breakout for yields. If we get a technical breakout tomorrow, a confirmed breakout outside of this channel, 
then it does open up the probabilities that we could see a move um, to 4.85. Now, I don't think it's going to be a straight shot move, but I do think if we get a confirmation, then we can consolidate maybe around to this 4.16 range before heading to this 4.8. So we really have to see what the US two-year yield does tomorrow. It's a pretty important day for yields, being the fact that we've had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 days in a row of upside on yields. It does favor that I think this could be a somewhat of a failed breakout, which could send yields a little bit lower in the short term, maybe giving back 50% of this move. That would be certainly a healthy retrace. So let's continue to monitor the US two year yields, but nonetheless, being the fact that the federal fund rate is at 3.25% and the US two year yield is at 4.31, this is implying that the bond market senses the Fed has to raise their Fed fund rate to 4.31%. So that would indicate that we still have more than 1% in interest rate hikes. So is that gonna be a 0.5 in, in November, accompanied by another 0.5 in December? Time will tell, but certainly the US two-year yield is something to truly behold and watch. If we take a look at the US 10-year yield, so a little bit longer on the curve, we also had this daily reversal signal here but the US 10 year yield is also trying to break out. So when you have the short end and the longer end trying to break out, potentially confirming a breakout tomorrow, that is certainly troublesome for the overall markets. But nonetheless, massive, massive extension move. You still have this daily reversal signal intact. So tomorrow is confirmation day for yields. I do have a little bit of resistance, actually a very powerful resistance um, channel again connecting these pivots highs over here, pivot lows, pivot lows, pivot highs. So you can see a float potentially up to the 4.15% mark in what would be kind of a blow off top in the yield market. Um, but let's just analyze the dollar, intraday dollar. So the dollar had that late night spike in the overnight yet last night. If we flip to the intraday action, it was pretty choppy. Here was your spike in the overnight. You had a massive fall. The markets looked like they were rallying, a little bit of a bear flag breakdown. And then the dollar started to rally again and actually recaptured most of the gains that it lost. So it's, it finished substantially higher than um, where I anticipated this. We, it looked like we were gonna get a little bit of a reversal signal in the dollar, but that did not come to fruition. So, but that being said, um, I would be shocked to see the US dollar soar past this 114.60 level um, before we have some sort of a meaningful consolidation period. So let's just take a look at the S&P 500. The S&P 500, just to refresh everybody's memory, we have triggered a head and shoulders topping formation. Um, the downside target puts us at this 347 mark. It just so happens to be a major pivot high and a technical gap fill. So that just firms up to me that we should see somewhat of a, a, a strong potential bounce from that level. But I would be shocked if we don't get a bounce um, in the near term uh, to potentially come up to this gap fill around 375 before rolling over again. So it could look at something a little bit like this where we bounce up over the next coming sessions, which would coincide with the US dollar or yield softening, and then eventually heading lower. My short term, I'm actually a little bit bullish medium and long-term bearish. So these markets, no question, are going to be heading lower. It's just, do we get that technical bounce um, in the coming sessions or do we head right down into this, this low down here? I'd be shocked if we had headed straight down into that um, 347 gap fill pivot high uh, completed measured move of the head and shoulders. Um, if we take a look at the weekly chart on the S&P 500, the SPY, you can see that that level also um, just so happens to coincide with the weekly 200 moving average. So clearly that's going to be a tremendous area of support. The last time we pierced that area was the COVID freakout, And then you have to go all the way back to basically this 2011 where you tested it and then your bear market of 2008 before you actually started recapturing that weekly 200 moving average. So I still think that we head to the low range of this parallel channel. That is kind of your longer term uh, trend since the global financial crisis. So I do think it's natural that we eventually retrace to the low end of this channel. It is upsloping, so the longer it takes us to get down there, the higher that level will be. But that would be a great level of support to certainly trade against. 
If we take a look at the um, QQQ, so the NASDAQ, um, let's just erase some of these. NASDAQ was also down on the day 0.49%, but showing uh, definitely some relative strength with big cap tech like Google and Tesla holding up this index as opposed to the S&P getting trounced by the energy and bank plays. But overall, the NASDAQ, again, you are at support. You have filled this technical um, daily gap over here, which you can see that you're closing right on. But again, I would naturally assume and expect a bounce to occur in the NASDAQ, um, which will also coincide with yield softening. But needless to say, um, there are some big levels of support that are coming up even if we trend lower. You have a nice little pivot low over here at 264 and then you also have a major pivot here at 258. So there's lots of support in and around this range. It will be a great level to uh, swing trade and day trade once we get down there as well. Um, let's just take a look at oil. Oil was down on the day but we are accumulating oil via the U, um, UCO now. Um, oil is at some good levels of support, major pivot from July. You have taken out all of the premium from the Russia-Ukraine war, which does prove to be a phenomenal backdrop to basically profit from in the event that certain sanctions or war escalates more. And now with the fact that the rumors are that the White House is going to be buying oil under $80 a barrel. So if they start to be buying be buyers of oil to restock the Strategic Petroleum Reserve, that could certainly lift a lot of the um, oil action for the positive side. So naturally, I think the minimum retrace for oil, I think we get a test back to this $85 level. So that would be a, certainly a healthy retrace, even if we starting to buy down here and we get a move all the way up to here. Natural gas has had some pretty wild price action. Um, you had a little bit of a down day and then you've had a beautiful reversal. Um, again, I still think natural gas has to go lower before I'm a net buyer. But in the event we get a retrace back to this neckline, I may consider shorting it around this $8 level. So we'll just have to wait and see how that progresses. Let's take a look at gold. Gold certainly under pressure again, not good for our mining and gold plays and silver plays, but nonetheless, if gold goes lower, I'll accumulate more. I love gold. It's still certainly basically had an inverse move from the dollar. Basically, the dollar started breaking out in and around this period over here earlier in the year, and it just put a tremendous amount of pressure on gold. Gold is coming into some good support levels. I do have a, a level down here around just a pierce of 1600 will be a great ad level if the gold gets down there. You can see that it, it coincides with this down sloping parallel channel where you should hit this channel. It'll also coincide with a major gap fill dating back all the way to 2020. Um, there is the potential that gold can test the 1500 level. So if we simply go to a longer time frame, let's take a look at what's transpiring in gold. There's a strong potential that gold can come back all the way down to these pivots over here from March, which would just be a pierce of 1500. Now, it's still basically $124 away, but gold's price action has been nothing short of, um, of, of very, very volatile action. It's been a lot of pressure to the downside and certainly a $120 move to the downside can happen very, very quickly, a lot quicker than most people think, especially if margin requirements go up, margin selling occurs, people just get spooked out because it's breaking key long-term moving averages. But naturally, if you look at the monthly chart, you are piercing the 50 monthly moving average. You're on a one, two, three, four, five, six months downside in a row. I love these trade, these setups where you have this long-term downside consecutive action in a row with no bounce. It does mean that when that inevitable bounce does come, it will be certainly a ferocious one to the upside. And that will also coincide with the US dollar having to pull back. But until that happens, gold is going to continue to see some downside. I was a little disappointed in silver's price action. It is breaking a little bit of this um, bullish consolidation. This was a beautiful bull flag that was setting up, which has broken now. I still think silver has a little bit more underlying strength to it, just due to how oversold it is. I don't think you're gonna take out these pivot lows, but it is good to see that gold, considering that gold is making substantially new lower lows, and you're still holding this major pivot, just shows you that silver is the place to be and it's going to be the outperformer once the precious metals do start to catch that inevitable bid. Okay, 
So Bitcoin's interesting because despite the massive sell-off in the S&P, and you can see here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, about two weeks of price action here in Bitcoin has gone to the downside. But you really haven't made a new lower low since this candle on September 19th this little reversal signal, and you've been trading inside of this bottom, this daily bottoming tail for now one, two, three, four, five, six, seven trading sessions. And considering the S&P has made um, a, a sharper move to the downside, it's really impressive to see the relative strength in Bitcoin. Considering the S&P has declined a lot sharper than Bitcoin in the most recent trading sessions, it does favor, I think this is a little bit of a leading indicator that we could see that potential bounce occur just due to the fact that um, generally Bitcoin does sell off with the markets, but considering Bitcoin hasn't really sold off despite us having a, a tremendous amount of days, even in the NASDAQ, you look at the NASDAQ has had one, two, three, four down days, and then you look at Bitcoin, Bitcoin's last four days has had one, two, three, four days of basically sideways chop action. You can arguably say this is an inside bar, mini bull flag, it's a micro bull flag, uber, uber short term. Um, it may not be uh, strong enough to overpower the long term trend, but it's certainly something to note the relative strength in the crypto sector. You would have naturally expected with the markets pleading lower and lower and the dollar surging to new highs, you would have expected Bitcoin to make new lows, but that's not the case. And if you simply look at how the US dollar has been pushing every single asset lower as it's been making new highs, you would have assumed that Bitcoin would have also made new lows as the US dollar made new highs. So taking a look at the DXY daily again, the DXY made one, two, basically starting from this candle over here, one, two, three, four days of new highs in a row, but Bitcoin has not made new lows. So that is certainly something that I'm taking note and paying attention to, considering that you have not made new lows, even though despite the last four days you've made new highs on the dollar. That's certainly intriguing and interesting to me. Um, so overall, to sum it up, I do think we're gonna get that technical bounce. It's just we have to be a little bit patient. Markets tend to go a little bit lower, but even if they go lower, we'll accumulate a little bit more, and we'll just have to wait and see how the um, technical bounce plays out, whether or not we actually get one. I do think markets are certainly extended. And when you have the likes of certain analysts turning bearish, uh, mainstream analysts turning bearish on mainstream on CNBC, that certainly is a little bit of a sentiment indicator to me that we are potentially nearing that short term bottoming in the indices. So um, we'll just continue to, to monitor the charts and see how the price action unfolds. Uh, we do have a couple Fed speakers this week, um, but overall, I do think the markets are directly correlated to yields and the dollar. The indices are not going to catch that bounce unless the US dollar starts to retreat and soften up. But even if the US dollar soften ups by one or 2%, which isn't even a big move for the dollar considering the recent moves it's had, even if it softens up one or 2%, you could certainly see these markets rip to the upside and, and catch some, some certainly a momentum trade. So um, nonetheless, let's continue to monitor the price action. It's certainly wild historical times over here. I think people looking back are going to be analyzing and studying history, what we've lived through and what we're going through in the currency markets. But it's truly, truly phenomenal to witness history unfolding. And I certainly think that uh, there's a lot of interesting price action ahead of us uh, for the remainder of this year. So stay tuned for more price action. Please give this video a big like down below. And as